Hey y'all, we are cycle day, I'm not sure, um, cycle day 26, and I'm not sure what DPO I am, um, I thought that I should be around like 5 or 6 maybe I think, um, yeah I should be like 6 DPO because I was supposed to have ovulated on the 20th. But I then turned around on the 24th and got a positive OBK. It was the first positive OBK I've ever got. And um, so my husband and I did take advantage of it and get the BDD done. But um, I just, I don't know where it's leaving me on my, um, on my ovulation and everything else. Right when I thought I was kind of getting the hang of it, this cycle and stuff, that I was starting to be able to understand things, I, like, you know, ended up having something else thrown at me. So, <laughs> I don't know where I am exactly right now, but I'm hoping that pretty soon um, we'll get um, a little indication of where we're at. Uh... But, um, yeah, other than that, there's really nothing going on. Um, I don't have any symptoms. I don't have any, anything really, any input of any sort to put in right now. Um, I probably am going to make a second video, um, after I finish this one, um, because I got a reading done with, uh, Sherry22, um, for any of you who have gotten the uh, psychic TTC readings and stuff from any of those ladies. Um, I've, I've gotten one done by Sherry. Um, so I think I'm going to make another video kind of sharing what happened in that reading. Uh, but um, as far as everything else goes, there's not a whole lot else going on right now. Um, Fertility friend took my crosshairs off because um, when my temperature dropped after I got the positive OPK, I went ahead and um, like put it in there. Um, I figured that since I got the positive OPK, which is now flat out negative since then, um, but since I got the positive OPK and my temperature dropped, I figured I'd go ahead and put it in. And, um, my temperature is back on a rise now, so, um, hopefully tomorrow, um, maybe the crosshairs will be back, um, as long as my temperature keeps going up, <laughs> um, which would then put me at ovulating on, uh, the 25th instead, um, but... Uh, another reason why I went ahead and put it in is because on the 25th I was having ovulation pain and stuff again. So I don't know what was up with the ovulation pain that I had on the 20th that was so definitively whatever. And then the ovulation pain four days later, again four or five days later, um, that was not quite as whatever as what I had on the, the on Monday night on the 20th but it was you know pretty undeniable that it was anything but ovulation pain itself so I don't know where things are at so I'm just kind of waiting and um, I, I'm thinking that this cycles going to be off um, I'm not expecting too much from this cycle uh, now because of all of this whatever that's happened. Um, I could be surprised, but um, I'm just excuse me. Um, I'm just really not expecting it. So I don't know, but uh, we will see. Um, I might make another video later on this week once my crosshairs come back up. Hopefully, if they come back up. <laughs> um, but uh. 
otherwise I, I, I don't know what to think about my cycle right now, I don't know what it's doing, why it decided to give me double ovulation or, you know, what, now the, the first time that I had ovulation pain, um, I didn't actually, had I hadn't actually taken an OPK, um, I have a hard time taking OPK sometimes because of the fact that I'll get lines on them four or five days, but I never get anything that'll be definitive positive. So, like, I just won't take them sometimes. And the only time that um, my OPK lined up with um, ovulation, according to my OBQ, was for um, cycle day 20, 24-25. Um, so, like, I don't know, I mean, because, like, after I got the positive OBK, that next night was when I got a purple box. So, like, that one actually kind of corresponded. So I don't know, you know, what to think. But then also something that was, like, really kind of crazy and stuff. Um, after I got the positive OBK, of course, my husband and I BD'd after he got home from work. And you're supposed to wait like at least eight hours and stuff before you take your OP or do your um, OBQ and stuff like that if you've had intercourse. And since it was first thing in the morning, like it had been over 12 hours by the time I took mine. Um, I I think it was running on actually about 13 or 14 hours. So I was showered, cleaned, and you know, shouldn't have had anything in my system or anything like that, but that was the lowest AVIQ vaginal reading that I've ever got. It was 33, so I don't know, that kind of does give me hope, but I still don't know what to think about it because it's just really off to me, um, so I don't know, I guess we will see. And, uh, like I said, when Fertility Friend gives me crosshairs again, I, uh, I'll probably make another video with their back. So, um, I don't know. It'd be really cool if Avograph would put crosshairs on their thing so that we can get a general basis on there. Because the crosshairs thing is something that's really, really helpful. And although I really like Avograph, um, because it is actually you know, tailored to work perfectly with my AVIQ, the fact that there aren't crosshairs on there kind of does make it less um, informative to me. Like, I think the crosshairs make it a little more dummy-proof, kind of. I mean, even though, you know, things like this happen where the crosses will, you know, be there and then they're gone and whatever, but, I mean, it does make it a little more definitive, I think, and, I don't know, so that'd be something that would be kind of cool if, um, Avograph would add that. Maybe I'll talk to Sarah and say something about, about that stuff so that they can, you know, look into doing something like that, or at least putting some kind of a cover line in there so that we can know, you know, where numbers should be lying with our AVIQ Ob and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, not anything else really going on. I dyed my hair. I did that. And I'm pretty excited about it because it's actually finally about the color red that I want. <laughs> like, it's really, really red again, finally. Um, I'm naturally kind of a dirty strawberry blonde, kind of. Um, well, not like a dirty strawberry blonde. Like a really, really light auburn blonde reddish kind of color um and I just like being a redhead um but I had my hair dyed black for so long and I mentioned that I wanted to re-dye it and my husband said that he wanted me to go back to being a redhead so here I am back being a redhead and I think it makes my eyes like way more green again usually they look way more gray and one thing that I don't like as much with it is my freckles show so much worse. And I hate my freckles. I've I've never been one for my freckles. But another plus is the fact that I don't have to um put uh 
mascara in my eyebrows anymore to match my hair color <laughs> um, because I didn't dye my eyebrows when I would dye my hair. So I would use mascara to um, fill them in and make them as dark as my hair. And now they're like the same color and I didn't dye them. The, they, they look like they're like the exact same color <laughs> being natural. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. We're going to go from here and see what happens over the next couple of days. Um, I'm going to get my paperwork filled out tomorrow at my new job, and I start there on Sunday. Um, so I don't know. Hopefully the next couple of you know weeks go okay. I don't know where I am on my two-week wait anymore. Um, but hopefully I'll find out soon where I am in that. So... Yeah, I guess that's it for right now, and uh, I'll talk to you guys in a little while. Like I said, I'm probably going to go ahead and make a um, video talking about my reading with Sherry. So, that's it for TTT this week, I guess. So, I will talk to you later. Bye.